Welcome to MSPTDA video number 28. Yes, Microsoft Power Tools for Data Analysis. And in this video, we got to learn how to deal with a many-to-many -many relationship. And how are we going to deal with it? In Power BI Desktop and Excel, we're going to use Power Query. With just a few easy steps, we can build a bridge table. And this will allow us to connect two tables in a many-to-many -many relationship. Now, last video, we saw a cool array formula to solve this problem. But that's not going to help us if we're in Excel Power Pivot or Power BI Desktop. We have the same fundamental problem. We have two dimension tables. This is a unique list of authors. This is a unique list of books. And if our fact table is giving us the units that we want to add up, and book ID is the condition or criteria in each row to tell us where those units should be used in our formula, then what are we going to do with this? We have a unique list here of book ID. But wait a second, two authors? If our goal is to create these three reports, then total units by author and a cross tab that includes author, that's just going to be flat out difficult. Now, if we want to solve this problem and create these reports using Power Pivot or Power BI Desktop, we could choose to solve this all with DAX formulas. But probably the easiest way to deal with this is with data modeling. And the BI tool we love for data modeling is, of course, Power Query. Now, before we jump into Power Query, I want to explicitly look at how this is a many-to-many -many relationship. Over in our PDF notes, there's a picture of both tables. And here's the situation. Go in this direction. If we look at author, this is the one side. That is a unique list. But look at this. There are many books that each author creates. But when we have the same two tables going this direction, this is a unique list of book IDs. And this one book, look at this, has many authors. So anytime you have a one to many this direction and then a one to many the other direction, you know you have a many to many relationship. Other examples of many to many relationships, you can definitely have a finished good that's related on the one side to many ingredients. But a single ingredient on this side can be related to many finished goods, machines to parts, bank accounts to owners, and many other examples. Given our three tables, our goal is to create these three reports. Author with the total units for each author, book title, total units, and then this cross tab report that shows book title, author, and the totals for each column and correctly for each row. Even though there's duplicates here, we only have a total of 228. Now we're going to start over here in Excel, and we'll jump over to Power BI Desktop later. Here's the file if you want to download it and follow along. On the sheet PQ Bridge table, here's our tables. I've already added D Books and F Sales to the data model, Power Pivot Ribbon tab, Manage Data Model. Here in Diagram View, here's F Sales. There's already a measure. And look at this. This is the book ID, the one side, one to many relationship. This model has no problem. One to many, if I want book title and total units, I can do that. We can click Pivot Table, New Sheet, click OK, name this. D books, drag book title down to rows, drag total units down to values, and we get what we want. Each one of the book titles flows in as a condition or criteria since there's a one to many relationship. It accurately filters the fact table to give us the total units for each book. Back over on PQ Bridge, D authors, power pivot, add to data model. There's the D authors table, Alt tab. Back over on our sheet. I'm going to copy this pivot table and sheet, paste below, Control V. I'm going to get rid of book title and check authors. The yellow here is trying to be polite. We're not going to touch it. It does tell us the truth. There is no relationship. So of course, when that happens, we get the grand total all the way around. The way we're going to solve this is with a bridge table between authors and D books. From D books, we'll have a list of all the book IDs repeated for each one of the authors. Then with the bridge table, we can build our one to many relationship, one to many relationship, where the many side for both tables 
is listed in the bridge table. Alt-Tab, back over on PQ Bridge. If we could take DBooks and transform this record so that we have DA22 book ID listed twice, and then repeat this once, and then on the second row, we'd have exactly what we want, a unique list of all the combinations of book IDs and author IDs. So we select a single cell, data ribbon tab, get and transform. We need to bring it into the Power Query Editor with from table. Query name is listed on the left and the right. We're going to change this. Something like bridge book ID author ID. Now the columns we need are book ID and the two author ID. So holding control, I click, click, right click, remove other columns. Now for this record here, we're starting with that item, and I need to repeat this twice. So I select Book ID column, right click, and the feature we want is Unpivot Other Columns. And just like magic, we have a repeat and our author for that book on two lines. Now we used up in the formula bar, table.unpivot, and I want to name this column right here. So I'm going to double click, and this is Author ID and Enter. Now I can select Attribute, right-click, Remove. That is our bridge table. Now I can close and load, close and load too. I want only create a connection. That's just for the Power Query transformation. But now I want to load it to the data model. Click OK. We can see our loaded query here. Up in the Data Ribbon tab, Data Tools, I'm going to select Manage Data Model. We can see our bridge table, Diagram View. And there's our bridge. And now what do we do? We take author ID. This is the one side over to the many side. There's our one to many. Remember, if we select author in a pivot table or a Power BI visual, that filter flows across and filters the bridge table. And what about book ID? Drag that to book ID. Now there's a one to many relationship. Notice the many, many on the bridge table side. Now how is this going to help? Let's go look at our pivot table and remind ourselves what the trouble is. For this row in the pivot table, Bill Scissors, it tries to flow in, but it cannot get to that fact table measure. That condition is coming from the author table. So, so far, the author, Bill Scissors, is coming across and filtering this table. Now, normally at this point in the video, I put up visuals, but here's a cool trick. Let's go over to Data View. Here's our authors. Here's what happens in the pivot table. The row condition is only Bill Scissors. So that flows across. What's happening behind the scenes is the filter hits this bridge table and only Bill Scissors is showing. And just like that, we have the three book IDs that we need. But what's the problem? That's the problem right there. A filter cannot automatically go from the many side to the one side. By default, filters always flow from the one side to the many side. Well, at this point, we have three options. We can use a full table filter. That pushes any filter from this table across to the other one side. We can use the cross filter function. And cross filter will ask us the question, hey, which direction do you want the filter to flow? And we'll say both. Or we can jump over to Power BI Desktop and simply edit the filter so that it's a bi-directional filter. Now I want to start by showing you the bi-directional filter. And you can download this Power BI Desktop start file. But here's the thing. We need to create the bridge table before we can simply change the relationship. Now we already did this over in Excel, but I do want to show you over here in Power BI Desktop, creating the bridge table. And it's easy. We've already imported these tables in Power BI Desktop Home, External Data, there it is. I can click Edit Queries. This is Power Query and Power BI Desktop. And over here, since I have imported all of these from the Excel file we were just working in, I come to Books, right click, Reference. That means this is looking to there as a reference. It's not going to re-import the table. We want to name this and Enter. Hold Control, click, click, right click, remove other columns. Right click, unpivot other columns. Up in the formula bar, double click, author ID, enter, attribute, right click, remove. 
That's our bridge table. And when I click Close, it closes the Power Query Editor. When I click Apply, it loads it to the data model. And look at that. It not only imported it, it already created the relationships. Now, I already created the reports here. And we can see the same errors we had over in Excel. Those are the grand total. And look at this. The cross tab lists the numbers everywhere. In Relationships, here's how easy it is. Right click, Properties. Instead of Single, I'm going to say Cross Filter Direction, Both. Click OK. There it is, the icon for both. Over in Report View, that is working, and so is this. Now, how did our model calculate 720 total units for Bill Sizzes? Well, by selecting the condition Bill Sizzes Author, this table is filtered down to a single record. By default, that filter goes from the one to the many side. So now the bridge table has the three books for Bill Sizzes. Now that we have a bidirectional filter, those three books flow across. Now D Books is filtered down to just those three books. And then the default one to many, those three books are passed over to F Sales. We see all the units for those books. And the total units measure can sum to get 720. That's the magic of bridge tables and a many-to-many -many relationship. Now, one thing about bidirectional filters is it could cause ambiguity in the model. That means if some of the tables were linked to other tables in two different directions, then the model might not know where to send the filter when a filter occurs. But for us, it's all in one direction, so there is no ambiguity. So that's method number one. Now we're going to jump over to Excel and do table filter and cross filter. You could do that over here also. If you did have ambiguity in the model and your tables weren't connected in a single direction, then you could use these other two methods. Now in Excel Power Pivot, we only have this one to many relationship. So now we're going to go over to Data View. F sales in the measure grid. Total units, cross, filter, colon, equal sign. And what's the name of the function that can change the filter context? The calculate function. Expression, square bracket. There's our total units tab, comma. The filter, this is where we put cross filter. There's the bridge table, book ID, tab, comma. The column that we want to receive this many to one filter, it's book ID in the book table, tab. Comma. And then the third argument, we're going to say we want it to go both directions. So now what we're doing is changing how the filter works for this formula. Now one thing important is that over in Power BI, when we switch that filter to bidirectional, that'll work for any formula we create. But over here, if we want multiple formulas to be able to go from the many to the one side, we have to add this cross filter to each formula. Close parentheses, cross filter sitting in Calculate, close parentheses, and Enter. Add some number formatting. Back over to our pivot table. There's total units cross filter. When I drag it down, now it has no problem. Now let's go do the second method. I'm going to call this one total units table filter. There's our calculate, our measure, comma. And I'm simply going to put the full bridge table. That bridge table for Bill Sizzes in the pivot table has those three rows filtered. By putting this entire table into filter, that sends those three filters over to the fact table. Now if we look at the expanded table diagram, Here's our data model, and we're trying to get the filter from the bridge table over to the fact table. Well, internally inside the engine, here's our bridge table. These are the native columns, book ID and author ID. But any table also has expanded columns, columns that flow from the one side to this table's many side. So of course, because this is one to many, one to many, the bridge table has all the columns from authors and from books. So that means when we select a particular author here, it filters this table, including the book ID column. So that's why when we put the full table, it will filter the F sales. There it is. I added some number formatting. We can already see there's a difference. Over here in the pivot table, I drag table filter down. And there we go. We get the correct book totals for each author. Now, what's going on with the $100 difference? 
Well, if we look up at this pivot table right here, we know from our study earlier in this class, video number 15, when we see a blank and we're pulling from a dimension table some field, that blank means there's an unmatched item in the relationship. There it is in our fact table, RRR, that does not exist as a book ID. Now, the pivot table's being polite. It doesn't know what that is, but it wants to include it in the total. But what's going on here? Well, when we use cross filter, that just changed the direction of the filter. So in the grand total cell, of course, the entire fact table has no filters. So it shows every single record, including the unmatched $100. But over here, we used a table filter. Our measure has a complete table. So in the grand total cell, there are no filters. This is what the bridge table looks like. And when this filter gets passed over to the fact table, the RRR record is not included. Now we have one last pivot table we'd like to create. I'm going to click in G3, use the keyboard Alt-N-V. Because we selected an empty cell and we have something in the data model, that's the default, click OK. From the books table, book title. From authors, author in the column. From F sales, total units table filter. And there's our cross tab. We get the correct totals at the bottom of each column and the correct row totals. Our report requires that we show both 228s for this book, for the two different authors, but we want the correct grand total there. All right, that was a little fun with how to create a bridge table, how to use cross filter and a table filter. And of course, over in Power BI Desktop, we have Power Query 2, so we can create a bridge table and use bi-directional filters. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up. Leave a comment and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next MSPTDA video 29.